Good evening, and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study with me, your host and facilitator, Minister Mark Walters. So grateful to be able to broadcast to you tonight. I'm coming to you from our lovely church, the Ebenezer Church of God, located in Landover Hills, Maryland. Our pastor is the awesome, fantastic, powerful man of God, Bishop Oliver Sobrian, uh, and next to him is his, his beautiful wife, the lovely Rose um, Sobrian, and their wonderful daughter, Sharona Sobrian. Certainly want to give honor to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, um, for all that he's been doing in my life and in the church life and in the life of all of you two um, listeners um, today. Uh, we're going to be um, having an expedited Bible study tonight. We're not going to be long before you tonight. I'm just going to cover the overview of the book of Joshua. And then next week, we're going to get into um, fully into the book of Joshua. We're going to go, I'm not sure we're going to do chapter by chapter this time, maybe groups of chapters. We'll see. Um, why don't you drop a line in the um, chat? Let me know which way you'd like to, um, to see it. And for those of you who are local tonight, I will not be on on the um, prayer line after Bible study. I have other um, comm commitments and engagement tonight. Um, so I'm not going to be able to join you um, after the Bible study tonight. Um, I certainly want to give a shout out to my awesome wife, um, Vanessa, and my lovely children, Emmanuel, Angelina, and Jeremiah. And for all of you, those who are listening, I'm so glad to have you. Um, tonight, it is a wonderful pleasure to have you week after week after week. Thank God so much for what he is doing and, and for God just giving us the ability to continue to reach so many people and for us to continue to broadcast um, this Bible study to listeners near and far. A special shout out. This is my this is the part of the broadcast where I give special shout outs. A special shout out tonight to my long time, long time, long time, long time, long time friend, um, Pauline Magoo, um, who I neglected to shout out last week, but Sister P, forgive me, here's your shout out. And a uh, great friend, um, long time listener, loves the broadcast, watches, tunes in every single week. Um, and so glad to have her. And so glad to have all of you from near and far, as I said before. God bless you. Um, we're getting ready to jump into tonight's lesson. Again, it is an overview tonight of the book of Joshua. Um, but before we do anything, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Jeremiah, Father, we bless you. We lift up your name, Lord God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the thanks. We give you all the glory. We give you all the worship tonight, Lord God. Uh, we just bless your name. We lift up your wonderful name, Lord God. We thank you for another week's journey, oh God. Some started last week, God, and they planned on being here on, on this Wednesday night, God, but they didn't make it, Lord God. And so, God, we just want to say how thankful we are and how grateful we are, Lord God, that you have kept us alive. You, you've kept us in our right minds, oh God. You promised us, oh God, to keep us in peace, Lord God, in perfect peace, in complete peace, Lord God, if our minds are stayed upon you, Lord God. And Father, I, I still am holding on to Psalms 91, Lord God, that he that dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and that, God, you will give your angels charge over us, Lord God, to keep us in all of our ways, Lord God. So in spite of what's going on, Lord God, across the culture, in spite of what's going on uh, with the virus and everything else, Lord God, we're praying, oh God, that even as a people of God, that you will keep us, Lord God, keep us, protect us, oh God, keep our homes, keep our families, keep our jobs. God, I'm praying for those tonight who are joining in tonight, Lord God, who are even having difficulties at home with family, having difficulties with children, Lord God, spouses, relationships, whatever the case might be, Lord God. But Father, you are a mender, you are a healer, you are a restorer, Lord God. And so Father, I just ask you tonight, Lord God, that the peace of God would rule in their homes and their families, oh God. We're all under so much stress, Lord God, even now, Lord God. So, But God, I pray that you will lighten our load. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that there would be good news on the horizon, Lord God, that this, this plague, this scourge would be behind us, oh God, even as we go forth into another year, Lord God. Father, I pray, oh God, even tonight, Lord God, that you would increase, Lord God. 
and that I would decrease, Lord God, for no one came to hear uh, what Minister Mark Walters is saying, Lord God, but they came to hear what does say of the Lord. So God, even I am sitting excitedly, Lord God, waiting to hear what you will impart tonight, Lord God. So Father, I pray God, have your way tonight, Lord God, in a special way and touch and deliver your word tonight, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, let's open the book and let's have a look. So tonight we're having, we're giving an overview of the book of Joshua. So again, welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study. So we're going to be looking at a couple of things tonight. The book of Joshua, we're going to look at its author. So who is the author of Joshua? We're going to look at the structure of the book. Uh, then we'll talk through the central message of the book. Then we'll talk to um, them uh, and the promised land, their story with the promised land. So we're going to talk about entering the promised land, overcoming the promised land, and occupying the land. Those are the, the topics that we'll discuss. So just by way of a little bit of um, background introduction. Um, so I don't think I neglected to do this the first time um, when we when we did this. So um, I thought it would be a good um, place to stick this in there. But let's look at the classification and division of the Old Testament. As you know, there are 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. We're focusing here tonight on the 39 um, books of the Old Testament. So the, uh, and I'm just going to give you what one division of the, the, um, the books of the Old Testament are. There are at least three different divisions. Um, so, but one um, classification is that from Genesis to Deuteronomy, we call that the Pentateuch, and Penta means five. So the five books of the, of the Bible um, are Genesis through Deuteronomy. Those are the first five books of so Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are what we call the Pentateuch. Then after that, you have the historical books, which we're going to be discussing one of them tonight, and that's Joshua through as Esther, rather, Joshua through Esther. So Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. So then we get to, to that. Okay. And then after that, following that, we have the poetical books. And that is um, begins with Job, Psalms, um, Songs of Solomon. Okay, so there, there are five there. I'm sorry, there's Job, there's Psalms, there's Ecclesiastes, there's Songs, Songs of Songs, or Songs of Solomon, and I'm missing one. Um, so I'm missing one. Give me a second here. But anyway, there are five books which would start with Job and end with Songs, uh, songs of Solomon. All right, so then after that, there are the major prophets, um, beginning with Isaiah, so Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, um, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, um, and then we have, then after that we have the minor prophets with Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and on and on and on and on. Uh, Twelve books by the um, minor prophets, and they're called minor prophets not because they're minor in their in their work with God, but minor in terms of the number of uh, books and number of chapters that um, is in their book. And the book of the the author um, has the title um, in each book. So it's Hosea through Malachi and Isaiah through Hosea through Malachi. It's the minor prophets, and Isaiah through Daniel is the major prophets. The poetic books are from Job through Song of Solomon. The historical books are from Joshua to Esther, and of course the Pentateuch is from Genesis through Deuteronomy. So that's just a little bit of a review um, uh, of the classification of the Old Testament. And certainly when we get into the New Testament, we'll we'll talk some more about that too there. All right, so Joshua, if we jump right into Joshua, Joshua is comprised of the 24 chapters that makes up make up Joshua. And as you know, as we said the last time, um, that Moses leads the children of Israel right up to the land of Canaan. So his job is to take them right up to the land of Canaan. Um, and, you know, without going into it again, we know that Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land, but God actually um, gave him an, an overview, like a, if you will, a 10,000 foot view of the promised land as he goes over the promised land and he and he's able to view the promised land, but he's not allowed um, physically to enter into the promised land. And then God just, um, uh, and, and we read that at the last time, God in the last chapter, um, God, you know, tells Moses to go up into the Mount Nebo, he's going to die. So then he goes up 
and then he, he dies and the angels bury him. But before he does that, he gives the, the charge or he gives the mantle. He passes on um, so its uh, succession, uh, leadership succession. So he passes it on to um, Joshua and Joshua is now um, going to be the leader. So it is now Joshua's job to take them into Canaan. And so again, the historical books, Joshua through Esther, they cover Israel history inside of the land of Canaan. So all these books that we're reading, it's going to, you know, Joshua really, Joshua really begins the, the foray into the land of Canaan. And then, you know, we, we're going to talk about the three aspects of that book a little bit later on um, in our overview. And then we're um, all the other books kind of pick up all the stories with, that go on in the land of promise. And it, uh, um, brothers and sisters, you just got to stay with me. It's going to be exciting as we go through Joshua. Joshua is a very fast moving, exciting book. Um, there are a couple, you know, it gets a little bogged down when we start going through um, the in allocation of tribes and things like that but there there's spiritual meaning right there in the allocation of tribes too so um, don't 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 fall asleep on that part on me but it's um, especially the first couple of parts it's fast moving um, it's wonderful it's a great story and then after that we have all the other historical books to go through and you're going to hear of the great kings and the sauls and the davids and and, and the um um uh, Absaloms and, and Hezekiahs and all those kind of things like that. So we're going to jump into all that a little bit later on as we go further and further into the Bible uh, study. So Joshua was written probably around um, B.C. 1646, um, written in Gilgal in Canaan as the events transpired there. Um, and so let's keep on going here. Um, Joshua's name um, literally means Jehovah is salvation. So Jehovah is salvation. He is the author, except for, and we'll see that as we as you read the text. So there's a part of it which you know talks about him posthumously. Um, so that's the postscript and a few of the verses. He was of the tribe of Ephraim. Um, so we know that from Numbers fourteen eight and um, and verse sixteen, and we see that when when uh, he was selected or he was selected as one of the lead spies the, he was the, the the head of his tribe the tribe of ephraim to go into the land of canaan to spy out the land that's from numbers chapter 14. And he became the leader we know that moses appointed him on two occasions uh, anointed him and appointed him um, to be the leader of israel after the death of moses he is called Jehosha, Jehoshua, and Oshia, and that's both found. Both of those pronunciations, both of those names, are found in the book of Numbers. He's called Jehoshua in First Chronicles, so we're going to see that as we go fur further in the actual book in the Septuagint. His name is Jesus. Um, he was a slave in Egypt after his. At his death, he was 110. We're going to get to that. That's in chapter 23, 24. Um, at his death, he was 110 years old, which makes him about 40 years old. So when he started, when he left Egypt, he was 40 years old. And we know they all wandered in the in the wilderness for another 40 years. So he's, he's 80 years old um, now when he begins this um, this leadership. So the book is broadly divided into three divisions. The entrance into the promised land make up chapters one through five. The overcoming of the promised land make up chapters six through 12. And the occupation of the promised land um, cover the remaining chapters 13 through 24. So again, it's divided into three divisions. The entrance, so this is them going into the promised land. And then we see what happens. You know, they, they cross over um, the, the, the river, Jordan, and then they, they cross into um, uh, the promised land. And there's a miracle that goes on right there as they're crossing the river Jordan, as they're entering into um, the city of Jericho, and uh, we see that there is going to be um, a miraculous um, conquering of the land of Jericho. I don't want to give it away because you, you haven't read it yet, um, but there's a miraculous conquering of the land of Jericho, which is also significant in terms of the spiritual uh, spiritual significance in how God enables us to conquer uh, our enemies and how God 
uh, is able to bring us into his blessings and into his promises for us. We got to remember, this is called the promised land. So this is all about God keeping his promises. And, and if I can just pause there for a second, what it speaks to is the fact that God always keeps his promises. Now look how long um, these people had um, um, been hearing about the promise of God. They had been hearing this promise now since they left um, Egypt. So, so 40 years later now, this promise is being fulfilled. So we got to understand that God always keeps his promises. Sometimes it takes a, a little while. Sometimes it, it, it happens right away. But God is a God who keeps his word. He says he's not a man, that he lies. Neither is the son of man, that he has to repent or go back on his word. But if he said it, he will perform it. He will bring it to pass. So God now brings them into the promised land at the time, at the specified time. Now, they would have been there sooner, but because of disobedience, and it speaks to us too, that some things that God is bringing us into, that we have to be obedient to his word, obedient to, to what he has told us to do, because disobedient, in this case, we see that disobedient causes, or not causes, but costs them time. So disobedience, even in our life, if we can apply this their story to our story, disobedience causes you sometimes to lose time. They lost 40 years because of disobedience and, and not taking God at his word. Okay. And so, or, or actually it's, it's not so much disobedience in their case, but um, unbelief and, and, and disbelief. Um, cause them to not enter into um, the promises at the time when God really, you know, 40 years earlier, they should have been, they should have been here. Um, so we, we're going to talk to the entrance into the promised land. We're going to talk about how they got to, to, to rid the land of all the, the, the inhabitants and the nations and the ungodly nations that were there. And we'll talk to why that was happening at the time. And God, and, and we have already covered the reasons why, why God is allowing Israel to drive out these nations. So if you go back um, into a couple of lessons, maybe it's Deut around Deuteronomy 17, I want to say, maybe about thereabouts, there's reasoning as to why God now tells them um, that this is, you know, tells them to go in and destroy um, the, the inhabitants of those land. There's specific reasons why God is, is allowing them to do that. So then they overcome um, the, the inhabitants of the land, and they also now occupy the land. And again, so, and, and that's actually, and, you know, this also, this this breakdown or this division is also characteristic or symbolic also of the Christian journey. So God has a promise for us. One day we're going to um, enter into uh, enter into the promised land that God has provided for us. That's the land of rest. We're going to overcome. We are we're overcome. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And when in one day we're going to occupy the promises or the promised land that God has prepared for us. And we see that again in our Revelation 21. So this is all sort of like a, a setup also for the Christian. The Christian has these same um, promises that we're going to be entering into um, the promised land of God. We seek for a country, a better country, not made with hands, whose builder and whose maker is God himself. Um, so, all right. So we're, we're pressing on. I don't want to preach too much tonight. I just want to Give you a little bit of teaching tonight and then um, get out your way because I know many of you have to go back and have dinner. <laughs> but um, next week, I promise you, we're going to go really um, step deeply into the book of Joshua. So, and again, like I said, please drop a note in the in the chat. Let me know how you feel about us doing it We um, um, chapter by chapter or if we should combine group. And uh, let me hear, I want to hear some feedback from you. So the central message, and some of you will say, well, it's only, it can only be one central message. But going through this, this book, there is the, the message really is faith. The central message is faith. But it's to me, there was there were such like different classifications of uh, or or um, in, in, in terms of how faith worked, in, in, in certainly in terms of looking at the outcome of faith, I saw the victory of faith over fear. So 
So, and we see that early on where God tells them, I think it's um, one and eight where it says, um, be of good courage, um, don't be afraid. Um, you know, it says the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt observe, but in it thou shalt meditate day and night to observe, to do all that is written um, therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. But he prefaces that be, he prefaces, he, prefaces and he postfixes it by saying, um, "Be do not be afraid, be of good courage. And we see that message where it says, be of good courage, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And so Joshua is a man that is walking by faith. And because, and now we see the outcome of what happens when a believer walks by faith. We see the outcome so powerful in the book of Joshua. So we see the victory of faith over fear, and we're going to get into that and in, in when we jump into joshua we're going to see the victory of faith over obstacles and opposition because they're going to have lots of obstacles and they're going to have lots of opposition but they're walking by what faith they're not walking by fear they're not walking by sight and they're definitely not walking in unbelief and so we're going to see them triumph over obstacles and opposition uh, and then finally we're going to see the victory a faith based on obedience to the command of God. So we, we we will see where God really does operate in the sense of um, when a person is obedient to his word, then God is, is obligated to keep his side of the promise. So we see that in the life of Joshua, and I'll do some comparison and con contrasting to what God told them to do in the book of Deuteronomy. And we see that when God says, uh, if you do this, then I will do that. We're going to see that in operation in the book of Joshua. And so, but that is all contingent of on their obedience to God. So we see the victory and faith and, and obedience is obedience, especially in, in this case, obedience now is, is the, the, the framework for obedience is the faith that we have in God. So when you have a faith in God and, and you trust God and you just you, you just you just put your all in God and you're trusting him and you know that he is somebody that you can trust. And so when you're faithful to him and now the faith now produces obedience in your life, then now what that does is that God now turns all that and he connects up his promise that he's spoken to your life um, with your obedience. And now those two are connected. And then we have a miraculous and a powerful, uh, victorious outcome because our faith is combined with our obedience now. And so when we walk in faith and we walk in obedience, then there is no stopping the child of God because now you have aligned yourself now with all the promises that God has given you, which are connected to your walk of obedience. It's not just faith. Faith without works is, is dead, as the book of James um, so poignantly points out. And but so, but but faith must be coupled with obedience. So it's it's not enough to just say, I have faith. That's not enough. But what is God asking you to do by reason of this faith? And so the things of God are activated by faith in God. But the things that he has called us to do because of our faith, we walk in the obedience to him. And so now God is able to activate the promises that he has promised us. That's, that's powerful right there. Amen. Let's go on. So they enter the land, um, chapters 1 through 5, and Joshua's commission for leadership. We see that in chapter 1. And then jo Jericho is, is going to be spied out. Um, Jordan is cross chapter three um, we're going to see some memorials and we'll, we'll understand fully what that means the next time we talk um, the covenant is sealed and the covenant in this case is circumcision um, because remember these are the the youngsters who uh, 20 years and under and also um, from uh, joshua and caleb's tribe um, we see that um, they were not circumcised um, after leaving Egypt, because we don't read about that in the wilderness anywhere, that any of them were circumcised in the wilderness. So they have been living this whole time um, without circumcision. And you know that circumcision um, with the children of Israel, it's their unique um, covenant that they have with, with Jehovah. This was the covenant. This was the sign of the covenant, of the covenant. This was the differentiation between them 
and all the other nations. And we know as Christians that ours is the circumcision of the heart. There was theirs was the circumcision of the flesh. Ours in this day and age under grace is the circumcision of the heart. And both are both of them are signifying that we have a covenant with Jehovah God, God Himself. So the covenant is sealed in this case with circumcision, and we read that in chapter five. Um, so then we're going to be talking about overcoming the land, and we're, we're winding down here. So we're overcoming the land in chapters six to twelve. So Jericho is. Jericho falls by God's power. We see that. And if you've been in church at, at any time in your life, you, you must have heard the story of Jericho. And we're going to go into it maybe with a little different angle. Um, we're going to talk about Jericho and his falling. We're going to talk about Achan and, and sinning. And he's bringing, he brings the feet to the camp. We're going to talk about the land. The land is being conquered um, from verses 8 through 12. And that's driving out the other nations. Um, so we'll see. We'll get to know the other nations, the Amorites, Philistines, all those people that are in the, in the land. Um, so we'll, we'll get through that. And then finally, we're going to talk about occupying the land. So the, the land is now divided up um, for the 12 tribes. And, and that's seen in verse in chapter 13. And this was done by, and I wrote in, in my notes that this was done by casting of lots before the Lord. We're going to remember um, what um, Moses commanded them through God, through God's leading. Moses commanded them to build six cities of refuge when they got to the promised land. And we're also going to talk about, I'm, I'm actually going to try to put it on one chart, all the um, the commands that they were given, the things that they were told to do once they arrived at the land of promise. And we'll see how many of them Joshua is able to do, because some of them Joshua um, does not do, like, you know, building the temple and and, and that, that, that comes a little bit later. Uh, so then one of the things, though, was the cities of refuge. So there were six cities of refuge. And then we see Joshua now um, designating them. Uh, and then we see Joshua's farewell, 23 to 24. Ah, and then let's go here. And I don't know if my pointer is working tonight. Oh, yeah, here we are. Um, so we're going to talk to the 12 tribes. So I'll probably be showing you this map now every every week instead of the other map that we're showing. So, you know, you know, as you know, we were coming from down here, um, down here. So, uh, let's see if we can find it down the land of Moab here. And then so what happens is now the tribes, and I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, Joshua is now um, uh, dividing up the, the tribes now. And so we have um, these tribes, which are, are going to be divided. So we have Manasseh, the, the Western um, tribe, Eastern Manasseh over here, Gad, Ephraim, Dan, and then we see the Southern tribe here of Judah. That's going to be important later on. And then we'll call this, when the kingdom gets divided, this will become the Southern kingdom and all of this will become the Northern kingdom. So there'll be, this will be um, Judah. And then this will be Israel at some point when we, when we get to there. Um, and so um, we see that the land as Joshua now um, is dividing it um, up for the people. And the early, I said, this is around 1600 BC. It looks like it's more closer to 1400 BC. So I'll correct that on my, in my notes. Um, so this is, this is the, the divided land that Joshua has set up. And this is the allocation, um, for the tribes. And we're going to see that as we get into the book of Joshua. All right, and I uh, think that's all we wanted to say tonight. All right, and so again, um, this is just a, a quick 10,000 foot view of the book of Joshua. Um, we are going to go in depth like we do, um, like we've done for, uh, if you've been with me, we've been going through, through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, chapter by chapter, and we've gone in depth into every single chapter. So, um, again, um, text, um, give me a drop me a line in the chat. Let me know how you prefer to see it, um, and I'll I'll take some feedback from you, and then I'll be led by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so we'll see how we um, will operate going forward. Um, but yes, so we will be seeing um, these two maps. Uh, when we begin our coverage of the book of Joshua, 
and I'll be going into a little bit more detail into these maps. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out also is here, um, the cities of refuge, which you're going to talk to. These things look surprisingly like coronavirus. I don't know if I want to show these every week. Um, but um, there's the six cities of refuge, which we're going to be talking to. There's one in Kadesh. And I know I've mentioned this before, Golan, Ramoth, Shechem, um, Bezer, and Hebron. These are the cities of refuge. And uh, we'll... We'll talk some more next week about what that actually means. Uh, you know, if somebody, you know, if, if you accidentally killed someone, then you could run to this city of refuge. And we covered that when we talked through the book of Deuteronomy. So I'll bring that lesson back again when I show um, what uh, Joshua now does uh, in terms of fulfilling um, what was asked of them to do in the book of Deuteronomy. All right, so I think that concludes our that part of the lesson. And so tonight, um, I would like to talk to you tonight. If you don't know Jesus Christ and would like to get to know him tonight, um, then I it's just I just want you to walk with me down the road to salvation. And it, it starts by acknowledging the fact that we're all sinners by nature and by choice. So we're all born, the Bible says that we're born in sin and we're shaping in iniquity. So there is no man which is which is born that does not have a sin nature. And the Bible lets us know in the book of Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there is nobody that can conclude um, that I've lived this exemplary life and I've never sinned. You have a sin nature from the moment of birth. So all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But look at what God did as we're walking down the road. So we started on the road. We're all sinners on the road. But then God now showed us love in that while. And, and so it says, while we were enemies of God, while we didn't, weren't friends with God, that the tremendous love that God loved us because people love their friends. It's very rare to find somebody that loves their enemies. But when when you are a sinner, you're an enemy with God. And But what God now shows is that, hey, I love you with the perfect love. He demonstrated his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, he still died. And, and there's significance to his death in dying on the, on the cross. He paid the penalty paid the price he paid the, the 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 penalty that was due was death and it should have been our death but he did the substitutionary thing he took our place on calvary and he died so that we would not have to pay um that that price and so all he's asking us to do is just accept the the, the work the price that he he paid he says, for we received eternal life as a gift. So that's a gift that God has given to us by and through his death on the cross. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so the final thing to do, we must trust and surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord. And it's simple. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And, and, and then Paul goes on to say, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so what that means is that in our heart we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, in our heart, we believe that he lived and he died, but more importantly, that he conquered death and he rose up from the grave. He lifted himself up from the grave. And by what he did, we know that if we believe upon him and, and what he did, then we will also have that same experience. To believe upon Jesus Christ and to trust in Jesus Christ and to surrender your life to him is to be under the knowledge that we will never die. When we leave this earth, when we go on from this earth, that, that others may pass and, and go to a place of punishment, but we will never die. For one day, God will raise up his children, raise them up, and we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, as the, the writer says, and so shall we be ever with the Lord, that we will ever be with with. Jesus Christ. So, and you ask yourself, well, how do I receive this free gift? It is simple. Let's just ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart tonight. I'm just going to say um, this prayer, which I'm going to read it for you. This says, dear God, and if you just say it to yourself, 
say it out loud pray it in your heart if you're driving down the road and you're listening to it to to me broadcast right now then just say these words with me dear god i know that i'm a sinner i know that my sin deserves to be punished but i believe jesus christ is the son of god and he lived and he died for me and he rose from the grave grave on the third day i now turn from my sin and i trust christ alone as my savior so by my word which i have heard by your word rather which i have heard and read tonight i thank you for forgiveness and everlasting life and i thank you for the life that i can now live through faith in jesus christ amen so if you prayed those words and you believed it in your heart and you said it out loud and you asked jesus christ to come into your life and I, let me just put this part in there just ask jesus christ to come into your life just ask him lord jesus come into my life make me a new person change my mind change my thoughts change my behavior live inside of me god and make me a new person i believe that you lived i believe that you died and I believe that you are raised again on the third day. And I accept the free gift of salvation in my life and in my heart right now. If you prayed that and you believe that, then right at this moment, you are saved. And welcome to the family of God. The Bible lets us know in Revelation that the angels are rejoicing over one sinner come home. Drop us a line in the chat if you've received Jesus Christ. Um, as your personal savior. And again, uh, welcome to the family of God. Let's go. Um, and finally, our assurance of salvation through Jesus Christ. So whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so tonight we're, we're um, the broadcast is, is nearing the conclusion. And of course, we're going to just talk to you tonight about giving. Um, Jeremiah should be showing you the giving link at this time. And again, um, please, if you like the broadcast, or even if you don't like the broadcast, and you'd still like to, to donate and contribute to the ministry, um, go ahead and, um, and um, be governed accordingly. You should see the Cash App um, designation there. And you can also go to our website and pay via, pay via PayPal. All right. And that's it for tonight. And as we say every week, uh, I love you, but God loves you even more. Have a good evening. God bless you.